Hey guys, John from BornToProduce.com and we're going to have a look at the bass line. So in this lesson, we're going to be covering a little bit of synthesis. Now we're going to use Cubase's Retrolog for it, which is available in the artist version and above. So if you're using Cubase Elements or even LE, then you won't have Retrolog, so you'll just have to use a, another Halion Sonic instrument and just load up one of the bass samples from that. Okay, so first off, let's go and add another track instrument. So again, we're going to navigate to our right-hand zone and click Add Track Instrument. From the drop-down menu, we're going to go to Synth and select Retrolog, and then click Add Track. Now, before we do anything else, I'm just going to turn this down a little bit. And again, you can preview any sound that you make using the keyboard in Retrolog, or of course, you can use your own keyboard if you've got MIDI keyboard plugged in. Now just to start off with, we're gonna use just this initial preset, that's just the sound that comes loaded into Retrolog whenever you load it up for the first time. We're gonna use that just to start off with, we're gonna change it, um, but we're just gonna program the bass line and get the notes right for it. So we've got our Retrolog track in our range window and we've also got our chord structure now so we know the music structure for our track so i'm just going to highlight that and then i'm going to drag uh, hold down alt and copy it onto the baseline track and then go into it by double clicking okay so the reason for copying over the midi or the notation from our chord progression is that we can then use this information to program the notes of our baseline so i don't actually want to use these notes i just want, want them there as reference so i'm going to actually mute all of these notes so right click and select the mute tool and then just highlight all of those and then they are muted okay so they're all muted but there's one quick thing i just want to show you and that is to navigate a bit easier in cubase we've got fairly limited controls down here on our transport panel uh, we want to be able to locate left and right as well so you can sort of click right to the beginning of the track in one easy go rather than having to always click up here on the timeline so to do that to show those buttons all you need to do is come down here and when that orange line shows up the orange dotted line just drag that out and there you go, you've got the extra controls. So now you can navigate to the beginning or the end of the loop region, no problem at all. Okay, so on to programming our baseline. So I'm gonna select 1 16th for my quantize preset, which gives me a bit, a bit of finer control. Zoom in a wee bit. So one trick to sort of know is that when you're programming a baseline, you usually not always, but you usually follow the very root notes or the tonic of the chords. So in that case, it's always pretty much the lowest note in the chord. So our bass line is going to go B, F sharp, and then back up to A, like so. Now I actually want to use the B1 note, so I want to be sort of drawing around this area and all these notes are in the way. So what I can do is I can just hit Control A to select all of the notes, and then if I hold down Shift, and press the up arrow on my keyboard, it'll actually move the whole lot of those notes up an octave. So you can see it's moved to B2. And that's freed up this area down here, so now I can start drawing in notes. So when you're using a separate window to the arrange window, I don't want to be clicking on the transport panel down here, because when I do, it takes me, it, or it brings the arrange window to the forefront and puts whatever windows you're using um, to the background, which I don't want to do. So in this case, it's much better for me to use the separate transport panel. As Jay's already mentioned, by hitting F2, that brings up the separate control, and I'll just have that stuck up here at the top. It's sort of out the way of everything. And then I can use the controls here to my heart's delight and not have to worry about going to uh, getting taken over to the arrange window. So as I mentioned, we're going to start our bass line in B, and I'm just going to draw in. I've got a sort of idea of how I want this bass line to go, so I'm just going to try this. And then again, I said it's going to go to F sharp, so let's draw in a note there. So just going on every third sixteenth at the moment, apart from that last one on the second beat, which is going to the off beat. Just a random pattern, but I'm gonna repeat that. And then now I've got that sort of pattern sorted, I can select a whole bunch of MIDI notes and copy it up to A, which is where I wanna go next. 
going to repeat that and then this last one I'll change that so it's Okay, so there's a nice sort of basic foundation for our bass line, but I want to just make it a little bit more fun. So let's add in some sort of sort of note change to the next. So I think that might work. And remember, so when I'm picking notes for the bass line, obviously I can, so I'm not selecting notes at random, I can always refer to the chord progression, which I've got muted here, and say which notes I'm actually using. So I can see C sharp, is a note that's being used in this chord progression, so that should be a safe note to use. I'm going to change it slightly, and I feel like that should go up. Down. Sounds right. Okay, so I like that little transition. And then I think that should go back down to F, but let's see. And then I just want it to go up there slightly at the end. See if that works. Okay, so that actually sounds pretty cool. Let's just play it with the cool progression to make sure all of our notes definitely are working. And then we'll start working on the actual uh, bass sound, get a nice sub in there. And that works absolutely fine. That's a nice little accompaniment to our track. So now we've programmed our bass line. In part two of this lesson, we're going to learn how to do some basic synthesis and make a sub bass line. Feel free to ask any questions or leave a comment in the comment section below. And if this video is helpful to you, please do like, share and subscribe.